Hindi mo tila. Afternoon, everyone. Pinned a link to the Facebook to the um, website. <clears throat> <sighs> Who we got? Hello, Donna. Afternoon, Bev. Hello, Sarah. And hello, Ali. Yeah, you made it. <laughs> mm. We changed our setup a little bit now, so I'm a little bit. <clears throat> We've got another table in our craft room, so hopefully it'll be, um, it'll look all right. It's a bit more, we've got more natural light as well, so. <clears throat> Afternoon, Helen. How are you? I can see how many people are on today as well. That's weird, isn't it? Oh, Oi, what about me, Donna? <laughs> Do you not miss me? How is everyone today? Are you all well? Are you coping? Happy New Year, by the way, as well. Do -do -do -do. <coughs> but we do something nice and cheerful and colourful today but quite straightforward you know me I tend to do quite simple cards I don't like doing elaborate fancy things just something nice and easy and simple and make a nice thank you card if you've got any thank you cards to send to anyone or early birthday cards it's my um, my nephew's birthday today actually Peter. He's 21 today, so... Hello, Annette. Happy New Year. Yes, we're very well, thank you. Still going. Still kicking. It's always a good sign. came on a couple of minutes early just to make sure that everyone we give people time to to get on if you want to um, so if you know anyone else that will be interested in watching our lives if you can share share it with them either through messenger or um, share it on your timeline on Facebook or all sorts of different ways you can share <clears throat> that would be fabulous or if there's any Facebook groups that you're in. Oh, Annette, it's your husband's birthday today as well. Ah, oh, brilliant. Happy birthday, Annette's husband. <laughs> Is he 21 as well? Right, I shall make a start. So I'm going to do... Oh, 21 again then, Annette. <laughs> Didn't you know 60s are the new 20s? <laughs> right, so I'm going to do... Yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to use um, some nice silhouette stamps that we've got from Creative Expressions. And I'm also going to show you the Airless Misters. <laughs> he wished, ha <laughs> ha. Um, I'm going to show you the Ellis Misters. Afternoon, Judith. Hello, Happy New Year. How are you? 
Um, and I'm also going to show you, um, so these two cards I did uh, with the Airless Misters. Um, and this card I did down here, I just did with the um, opaque pigment ink pads. So you could use distress, the distress oxides or um, the Harmony ink pads, which uh, everyone knows I love these ink pads. Um, so it just gives a little bit of a different finish. Um, the I don't know if you can see it on the Airless Misters, but they have got, um, they're like, pale they're pearlescent. Airless misters they are, so they do have a bit of a, a shimmer in them. I don't know if you'll be able to see that or not on, on there. But we have the cards in the shop um, on display, so if anyone wants to pop into the shop and have a look, <coughs> uh, they'll be around. Well, I think you can see a bit, a little bit of it, can't you, on there? Oh, my camera work is amazing, isn't it? Um, yeah, so those are the three cards, those are the three cards that I've done already. So I'm going to do a, a similar version. I'll show you how to use the Airless Misters first of all, um, and then I'll leave those aside to dry for a bit. And then I'll show you how I did this card down here with the um, pigment ink pads. Okie doke. Um, and these are sort of, D I think they're DL size, they're 210, 210 by 10, 210 by 210 folded in half um, is the is the, the basic size which is um more or less dl i think um and I, they're just a nice i like i like the shape you know and it fits perfectly with these stamp sets that's the i mean that's the main reason i did it like that so in the um stamp sets there are i don't know how many i'll show you now <clears throat> but they are the designer boutique creative expressions stamp sets they are all um, oh, actually, that's what I was going to do. I was going to cut around in the middle. Um, they are all foam-mounted grey rubber, apart from the sentiments, but I'll show you that now. Um, so that is the first one. So that is called Stargazing, which is nice. I think I did a birthday card for my dad with that, actually, because he likes camping, although it's mo more motor caravan camping that my dad likes, but, um, but there we are. Um, oh, hello, Judith Young. How are you? What's the weather like up there? Thank you, Donna. Um, this one is called Lovers in the Air. Lovers in the Air. Everywhere I look around. That's nice, isn't it? That'd be perfect for Valentine's Day. And that's the one I used on that one, actually. Then this one's one of my favourites as well. This is called Gone Fishing really nice and with this one just so you know it it does come as one full um stamp plate uh, but what i've done because that is separate from that and there's a bit of a big gray space in between um i've actually cut you can see i've actually cut the um the birds and the sun part out um so that it's actually separate and then stamped it like that because the thing is if you try and ink it up um there's a chance you might end up getting some in the middle bit which would not be good fun so i've cut those so that they're two separate stamps now but they does come as one one um, complete stamp when you get it this one's a nice one as well what's this one called as sweet as honey so anyone who's into their bees and nature and things like that it's a nice one I like that one. Oh yeah and by the way they're all 8.99 these these rubber stamp sets so it's not a, not a bad price i don't think uh, Harvest Time is this one, another good one for spring and summer, and for any farmer friends that you know. Um, oh, hello Carolyn, how are you? Oh, you've got snow up there, Judith. Oh, Judith lives up in Scotland, I think, so, um, you've got snow, yeah, there's a, there, you know, I was looking at the weather actually earlier, and it was, it was, all over Scotland, northern Northern England, and all that sort of area. So, we've um, we've avoided it in in Wales again. It's not too bad here. Uh, so this one is called Twilight Grazing. That's a nice one as well, isn't it? With the um, with the deers. Very nice that one is. And it's all pre-cut as well, ready for you. And then this last one. This is the um, 
uh, sentiments stamp set. So this one is actually, um, I assume they are um, photopolymer. I would assume, I don't know. Not sure actually, I would assume they are because they look a bit thicker. They're probably not acrylic, um, So, but they are clear stamps. Lots of lovely sentiments on there and they all coordinate really well with um, with these stamp sets. The one I'm actually using, the stamp set I'm using, um, it's one of my favourites, which I use a lot, is from uh, Phil Martin's Sentimentally Yours Ticket Tape Tastic Essentials stamp set this is. Um, I love this stamp set. Really good for, um, for all sorts of different um, card styles. So that's the one I will be using. We do still have some of those in stock in, in D shop. Um, yeah, I don't know. Which one shall I use today? Because I've got three of them myself and then the rest of them I've just brought home just to show you. <clears throat> I don't know. I'll, I shall have a think about that later. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how, how to use the spritzers. So I shall move the cards away a little bit. And I've got my um, non-stick hot stuff mat to protect the table because I've got my nice, my nice IKEA table here. Um, so in the Airless Misters, I could have sworn I'd already done live on the Airless Misters, but apparently I haven't. I couldn't find it. <clears throat> so unless I'm going do lally, but there we are. Yeah, so the Airless Misters, oh, they, don't they look lovely like that? Not. Um, yeah, so the Airless Misters, they come in, I think I've got all the colours here. I think I, I bought all the colours. One, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six different colours at the moment in the Pearlescent Airless Misters. I think there are some other ones in the non-Pearlescent, uh, but we've only got the Pearlescent ones at the moment. But they have proved rather popular. Indie Shop. Uh, oh, Ju Judith said it was minus nine the other night. Good grief. And it was minus 11 degrees with the wind chill factor. Always called it Cumber Cumbernauld, Scotland. Oh dear. <coughs> Wrap up warm, Judith. Yeah, so um, these ones we've got Ocean Sparkle is that one. Then we got Icy Pink. Then we got Victorian Gold. Uh, lavender Rain, lovely, um, Golden Sage, and Blue Horizon. So I think in this card that I did, I used the um, Spritzers, Airless Misters, or Careless Whispers as I call them, um, and um, I used these two colours, so the two blues, so Ocean Sparkle and Blue Horizon. I think I used Ocean Sparkle at the bottom and Blue Horizon at the top. Which would make sense, wouldn't it? Uh, so they haven't really got like an orange, orangey sort of colour in there, which is why I didn't use those to do a, like a, um, a sunrise for today's card. But um, I can use, they've got some nice, a pink, a pink and a purple. I might just use the pink and the purple. And maybe even a bit of green. Pop those back up there so they're out of the way. Oops. <clears throat> uh, so golden sage, icy pink, and lavender rain. Make sure that I'm, my space is clear. So with these, they um, because they're airless misters, um, you can the the way they're designed is there's no sort of um, aerosol in them. Um, and you can squirt them at any angle. So you can squirt them up upside down, you can squirt them to the side, you can squirt them up, whatever, and it will always squirt properly because of the, the way the mechanism is designed. Um, but because they're pearlescent, you need to make sure that you give them a really good shake um, before you start using them because all the, all the mica uh, will sit in the bottom of the bottle uh, and then all the colour will be in the in the sort of the, the rest of the bottle. So you need to give them a really good shake. There is a ball bearing in there as well. 
Um, so I shall go with the, I'm going to try the green first of all. So you can hear when you shake it, there's a ball bearing in there. And if when you first shake it, you can't hear the ball bearing, uh, you just need to keep shaking it and eventually uh, the ball bearing will start doing its business. And the other thing with these as well, I'm not sure if it tells you. Well, it does tell you the instructions. It says to shake the bottle. Um, but it's the other thing as well is with these um, is if you want a fine mist, you need to give it a really good push. And if you want it more of a blobby, sort of a slower, less misty finish, uh, then be a bit more gradual with the, the, the plunger, the spray part, whatever you call it. So I'm just going to stand up for this and I'm going to do quite a fine mist if I can. And then just go across the... Actually, no, I want to put my thingy on first, don't I? Because I want my sunrise. So this is... Um, what I've used is a piece of Yupo. Yupo paper that we sell in the shop and um, all I've done is just die cut it with one of the nesting dies to make a circle you could use um, masket sheets you could use um, acetate um, you could use mylar um, so if you've already got a, um, a circle stencil you could use that you could use a post-it note as well if you just um, die cut or punch out a circle uh, so anything that gives you a circle mask basically is what you want so I shall put it down the bottom here and the other other thing I've done is I've just put some um, low tack tape on the back just so that it or repositionable tape or whatever just so that it sticks a little bit just so it doesn't blow away when I do the squirting and hopefully I should be able to use this one because it's UPO you can wipe this wipe the surface I should be able to wipe it clean afterwards and use it on my other card. So, make sure I've got, got that going. And then just gonna give it, uh, come on. It's probably because it's a bit clogged up, this one is, I think. Oh, there we are. <laughs> Oh, just going to give that a little bit of a squirt with that and I'm going to end up getting covered in it as well I can see because I'm terribly messy I am I always get covered in these things <clears throat> so then hmm, what second one I'll use the second color I shall use is the icy pink so again see when you first shake it you can't hear the um, uh, what's it called ball bearing eventually see there's a ball bearing in this one I still can't hear the ball bearing but it is shaking up anyway you can see in there it is shaking up nicely to make sure this one's squirting and then I should go sort of around the middle bit. Get a bit of the pink. And I tend to wipe the nozzle a little bit just to give it a clean. And then the last one I'm going to use is Lavender Rain. Oh, I can hear the ball bearing in that one. So this is a bit more messy than doing the, the pigment inks. But this is just one technique. I mean, there's all sorts of different techniques that you can do. Just need to get this one going as well. I should have checked this beforehand, actually. Working. 
Da da da, Ian's just gone to give it a bit quick clean for me. See, I've got my, I've got it all over my fingerprints already. Thank you. Is it working now? Let it wash it under the sink. Lovely purple colour. <laughs> now these do take a while to dry as well, so, so what I'll have to do is I'll have to um, leave it to the side um, just to dry. It's easier if you can just leave it to dry nice and naturally. Um, rather than using my heat tool. It's going on. There we are. They do, the nozzle that does sometimes can clog up if you don't use it for a while um, but all you need to do is just run it under the tap um, and um, it should clear out any any residue so then I'm just gonna go across the top that's a lovely color that is isn't it the purple lovely and there we are so give that a quick wipe might be an idea to give them a quick rinse after you've used them just to make sure that the nozzle is clear because um, you might get a little bit of mica in there. So that's my third colour, which was the Lavender Rain, which is all over my finger now. Lovely jubbly. <laughs> no, Judith, it was just... I don't, don't know if you can even unscrew those, actually. I think it's just because we haven't used it since before Christmas. So, um, yeah, so that's probably why it was being a little bit of a plain pain. So that's that. So then I'm going to carefully take my um, mask off of there. Be very careful. And then I shall take this and I'll put it over on the other table just to one side. Uh, so at the moment you can see it's I mean it's drying a little bit, um, but as it dries you get the the mica um, coming out a lot more. So hopefully by the end of today's live that'll be dry and then I can show it to you. So I should put that over the side for the moment. <coughs> and now I've got a load of mess all over my nice clean mat here, but as Ian is always telling me, don't. Don't just waste it. So, <laughs> oh no, I'm not going to waste it. So I've got a spare piece of card here, and I'm just going to pick up all of this colour because Ian would never speak to me again if I didn't. Just pick it all up onto the piece of card. Doesn't matter how um, how careful you are. It's supposed to be a nice random thing. And what you can do as well is you can use the same piece of card um, for a while, and then you can so it'll dry in between, and then you can build up the the layers. So next time you use your card, your your misters, you can. Do the same technique again and build up another layer. And you can just keep doing that as much as you want until you're ready to actually use it. That's quite, oh, lovely colours. Quite, um, quite ethereal, quite, I don't know, pixies or, or maybe even underwater effect on that. Um, a little bit in the corner I need, so grab some of that. There we are. That's quite nice with the with the green, isn't it? What was that green? Golden golden sage was the green. Yeah, lovely, isn't it? It's, you know, so that's not cost you anything. Just a nice extra backing that you can die cut some flowers out of, or you can use it on the backing of another card, or whatever you like. <clears throat> Put that to the side and then I'm gonna I'm sorry but I'm gonna have to give this all a bit of a clean now. 
So I'll wipe my Yupo. It will stain a little bit, but um, but that's fine. That's not a problem. And then just give this a quick spritz with some water because these are water-based inks. So easy enough to, to wipe off. And then just use my tea towel. <clears throat> Always best to use a tea towel rather than baby wipes or anything like that because baby wipes, wipes are not very good for the environment. All that plastic. So use a good old fashioned towel, tea towel or an old dishcloth or duster, old t-shirt, you know, anything like that. No excuse these days for using horrible plastic baby wipes, if you ask me. So there we are, so that's that, nice and clean. My hands are still shiny, so I could do with a, let me just have a quick spritz on my hands. Try and get rid of some more of that. And then make it nice and clean and tidy because otherwise I'll put my fingers in it and it'll make a right blooming mess later and it will spoil it. Microfiber cloth, yes you could use that Ian, you could use any anything really. Anything at all. Um, right so, so the next one I'm going to do, so with the first one I did the spritzing first of all and then what I will do later, once that is dried I will stamp over the top of it which is what I did with this one, I did the spritzing first of all and then I stamped over the top with Versafine. Um, so that's, so you, get, you, you get a sort of a, um, quite a subtle sort of finish with that. Um, so that was that. This one I used the, um, I actually stamped first of all um, and I think I, yeah, I heat embossed. So I stamped with the Versafine and then I used a clear embossing powder and then heat embossed it. Uh, and then I used the spritzers on top of it. And you can see that I've used the spritzers on top because it actually leaves, um, it actually sits on top of the embossing powder. So if you can see that, which is, I actually quite like that on this card. It looks quite nice because it's um, a seaside scene. It just, you know, it, it it seems to, to work nice with that. But obviously if that's not what you want, um, then it's best to um, stamp after you've used the, the sprays. Okie doke. So, good to know. <coughs> trial and error, trial and error, give it a go. And if it doesn't work, try it again. <coughs> so with this one, um, I'm going to get my little moon or sun or whatever you call it. Um, now on the first one I put it at the bottom. It's quite nice actually at the bottom, but which stamp set shall I use? I might actually use this one this time. Ooh, or do I do that, that one? And then I can put the moon... No, because that one's got a moon on it, so I might, yeah, I might use this one, I think, actually, this time, just to be a bit different. Yeah, so I think I might, I might actually put the moon at the top. That'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? So, what I'll do is I'll stick my, stick my moon down, and then that's actually going to be the top. That's central, I think. <clears throat> um, and then I shall work from there. So the three colours that I'm using from the um, Spectrum Noir Harmony Opaque Pigment Ink Pads. It's a mouthful, isn't it? Um, I've got Honey Pot, Orange and Chinese Red. Those are the three, three colours that I used on my first card. Uh, so I will stick with those just to be safe, I think, because I know that they work. 
Uh, so the first one I'm going to use is the honey pot. Um, I'm just using smoothies. We um, sell these in, sh in the shop, either in a pack. I think it's a pack of two of the um, the this size, and then we also do some of the mini smoothies um, from which are Spectra Noir. Um, so it's up to you. You could use these. You could use the blending brushes. You could use blending tools. Um, there's all sorts of different things that you could use out there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of the ink, put it on my mat just so that I'm not going straight to the to the card. Um, and then I'll probably go from. It's easier for me to to go from this from this side really. And then I'm just going to start from on top of my mask and then work my way out a little bit. Was this what I was going to do? Actually, no I wasn't. I was going to stamp first of all. Because I was going to stamp and emboss it and then I was going to do this over the top. That's what I was going to do. So, right. So let's do that then, shall we? Let me just grab my my stamping tool. So I'm going to use this. I put my mat out of the way for the minute, so I don't get into a mess. Um, and then where's my stamp set? Right, so. Take my moon off for the moment because I don't need that on there. Got a bit of blue on there now. Probably from the back. Let's use that side. Right, so I got my four magnets. I found my other magnet stuck to the back of my um, my watch last night. So when you take it out of the pack. Uh, this one has already been, well, they've all been pre-cut. This one has been um, pre-cut like that, so there's nothing really in the middle. Um, some of them you might want to cut a little bit extra out if you want to. It's up to you. Uh, but they are, as I said, they're all foam mounted as well. So all you need to do is just peel off, carefully peel off the backing. Like that. Put that to the side and don't chuck it out because you'll need that again. And then that is now um, sticky, cling, cling, clingy, is that the word? So, um, oh, I'm missing some of these. Uh, uh, oh, Sarah, Sarah's coming back, Sarah's coming back later. Um, oh, gainer one, is she? Too large, too small. Okay. Right, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my piece of card in my press to impress. Stick my magnets in there. And then this is actually cut. This piece of card is cut a little bit bigger than I actually need it. So that what I will do is when I'm ready, I will cut it down just so that it fits perfectly. Um, so that's easier to do. To make sure that I... Keep in camera shot. I should be able to get those down there. And I'll put my magnets in there. Clues. Oh, and see, the other thing I always forget when I'm using. Ian didn't remind me. I always forget when I'm using rubber stamps that are foam mounted, is that you need to remember to take the foam piece out of your press to impress. Otherwise, it'll be too thick. So take that out, first of all, and then put your magnets on your card and your piece, your stamping piece. There we are. And now when I close it, it's going to stick to the back of that. And I'm fine. I'm ready. Uh, so I need to get my... If I'm going to emboss this, I need to get that ready as well. So I've got clear embossing powder. This is the Superfine uh, clear, Crystal Clear 
sentimentally yours embossing powder that I've got. So I'll get that ready. Um, I'm also going to give it a quick, because I'm using clear embossing powder, it's not the end of the world, but I will give it a quick um, tap over with my anti-static. Just to make sure that that's okay. La la la. Um, and then I'm going to use the Versafine. So this is the Versafine Onyx Black. We've, got the Ver we've actually got the Versafine Claire uh, ink pads in the shop now, but you could use either the Versafine or Versafine Claire. Um, and I may need to ink it up a couple of times. So I might try and do it sideways actually so that you can see. So because these are silhouette ink, silhouette stamps, you need to give it quite a good inking as well. Because I'm using my stamping tool, it means if I miss anything or if I don't quite stamp it the first time, I can re-stamp uh, re it or re-ink it, whichever. So I'll just bring that over and give it a bit of a push. Let the ink soak into the card. Make sure all the areas are pressed down. Because I've got the trees at the two ends, so that's going to be the main areas that I need to concentrate on. Have a quick look. Mm, yeah, see, I need to give it a bit more of a push. I probably need to lean a bit more, actually. Let's give that a, a bit more of a press. I do love these stamping tools. They're fab. It makes such a difference. Well, so I shall give it another ink. Ian doesn't think, seem to think this ink pad is running out, but I do. <laughs> I can hear him complaining downstairs now. It's not. push still a few little bits I'm not quite happy with I think that'll do, and then take that out of there, get my piece of paper in, and then I'm going to use my embossing powder, sprinkle that all over, mm, a bit clumpy in there. stuck nicely because it's a versa fine it does tend to stay wet for a, quite a while um, I do I, I'm, I'm I just like to get it on there as quickly as possible though just in cases and then 
once your powder's on there, then you don't have to rush too much. You can take your time when it comes to heating it then. So, then what I will do is... Oh, I missed a little bit in the corner, actually. Obviously, because this is a um, a silhouette stamp, it is going to be um, a bit more demanding when it comes to stamping and embossing. It's not like the the fine line art stamps that we tend to use quite a lot as well. There we are. And then what I will do with my stamp on here is oh my table is in an absolute mess now I've got it every I've got ev everything everywhere <clears throat> uh, so I'll put this back onto there so I'll put my foam mat back in there again and my four magnets make sure I don't miss any and then what I would normally do is find my scrap of paper rough scrap of paper here and I tend to just sort of blot my stamp first of all just to take off any excess ink onto there first of all you know, so you know it does take off a bit so do that first of all and then because it is a versa fine ink pad you can't just use water on it so that's when I use my fabulous archival ink cleaner by Ranger. This is brilliant, this is, I love it. So then just put some of it all over my stamp. All the different areas. It works so well, this does. And you can use this on any type of stamp as well, doesn't it? You can use it on acrylic stamps as well as polymer and um, uh, what are these rubber stamps. And then I tend to give the, the little dauber a, a bit of a wipe just to keep it a little bit clean if I can. And then you can leave it for a few seconds and then just use a cloth or whatever to just give it a wipe. And then you'll see all of the, the ink just comes off lovely. And it smells nice as well too. It's got a, like a nice citrusy smell to it. So there we are. It's brilliant. Love it. Um, so there we are. So that's all nice and clean now, isn't it? Look at it. It's always a good idea to keep your stamps nice and clean because then they'll last you for years. Yeah, and then I can just peel that off of there and then put my backing back onto the back of it. And then that'll keep that dust free. And then put it back in my package. And that's always the most challenging bit is trying to get it back in the blooming pack. And if anyone's got any questions as we're going along, just feel free to ask. I'll, I, if I miss them, then Ian will answer them for you. We'll go in. There we are. Sorted. Yes, yeah, Simon Hurley. Um, he's an American... Um, uh, what do you call him, really? An American, well, he's American. He's an American stamp designer, and he does car making things like that. And um, so he's the one that that drew that to our attention in the first place. 
So, um, I'll bring my non stick mat back in again. Still got a bit of pigment ink there, so I'll make sure I keep that out of the way. Uh, and then I should give it a quick blast. Yeah, it is very good, Donna. We've sold quite a few of them actually. And it works on all of your inks. I mean, if you're, if you're using just pigment inks, um, if you're quick, then they will clean straight away, just with water. But if you do find that you've got any um, any residue left on them, then um, this ink, ink cleaner works really well. And it'll last you for ages as well, which is good. I'm just going to go slowly over all of this. Make sure I get all the bits. I do like Peter Bossen. It's very therapeutic. Very satisfying. Uh, yes, it is different to the stays on cleaner, Sarah. Sarah, even um, this one, um, the the stays on cleaner tends to be is a, a more of a harsh cleaner. Um, so you have to be careful about using that with uh, acrylic stamps, especially. Um, whereas the stay the stays on cleaner can actually eat into your stamps if you after a while, whereas this one doesn't. So um, that's why we love it. Nearly there, didn't take too long. Nice glossy finish is what you're looking for as well. You can heat from underneath if you want, but um, <clears throat> life's too short if you ask me. There we are. That's lovely, isn't it? Looks really nice. And um, using the um, the clear embossing powder just gives it an, a, a stronger finish as well. It's a nice, nice little scene that is, isn't it? With the two bikes as well. And lots of little love hearts there. Mm. A romantic. There we are. So that's that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my um, colouring with my little moon. Or sun, I mean, it's, a, it's a sun, isn't it? Not a moon. So I'm going to put that at the top, I think. Perfect. Will it clean off stays on ink? Yes, I think it will, Sarah. I'm sure it cleans off any types of ink. Um, you'll be able to clean it all. Water-based, permanent, pigment and solvent inks. Yeah, so stays on is a solvent ink, isn't it? So non-toxic with an, with this non-toxic cleaner, safe for use on rubber and clear stamps. And you can use, also use it on your um, your mats as well. So yeah, yeah, I'm sure you can use it on stays on. Ian's actually going to give it a go now. Um, yes, they do indeed, Judith. The wow factor. They are fab, aren't they? There we are. So this is this will still be usable what I put on my my um my mat earlier so then I'm just going to start from the middle and just work my way out and you can go as far out as you want you can do rays if you want you know sort of nice um nice rays or you can 
this is going to be more of a sunset, I think, this one, because I'm doing it this way round. I've got the yellow at the top, haven't I? So, there we are. And then just bring it out a little bit. Looks nice, doesn't it? Simples. So that's my first colour, and then my second colour is going to be the orange. Orange, as they stay in France. So again, put some on your mat, just so you're not going straight to straight to it. Oh, there we are. So Ian's just put some of the stays on on one of his stamps, and you're going to want the stays on clean the ink cleaner now, aren't you? Yes, please. There we are. So let's do a live demo, shall we? I stamped uh, it as well. So it's, that's what's left. So that stays on on there, and Ian stamped it. And then if I just dab a little bit onto there, and then get my little coffee, leave it for a couple of seconds, and then give it a wipe. Well, yes. So yes, it does. It does clean stays on. It was probably already a bit dirty before. Wasn't yeah, it? it was. Yeah, yeah knowing you. It's taken more off. <coughs> yeah. So yes, it does, Sarah. Is the answer to your question? Yeah, it's brilliant. So my next colour was the orange. So. Grab some of that, and then I'm just gonna work out even further. From the center. Isn't it nice and warm? It's what you want at the moment. It'll be round again soon at some point, I'm sure. Bit of sun. And the last colour I'm going to use is the Chinese red. And this time I'm rather than going from the middle, I'm actually going to go from the outside and just sort of work in a little bit just so that it'll just give it a bit of an edge. So um <coughs> Got a bit of a border on this anyway, so. No, I'm not going that way, I'm going that way, aren't I? Be careful not to get my fingers too much on there. So it's just a little hint of this of the red in there just to fill any little gaps you might have left over Want to blend the colours in And said, what type of card are you using? This is, ooh, this is just the, um, ah, well, that's right, that was in the stamp, wasn't it? This is um, just our normal white pick and mix card. This is, I used it on the, the Airless Mister ones and also on uh, the these pigments as well. So yeah, just the, uh, not the super smooth, just the, you could probably use the super smooth on that, uh, but this is just the, um, the pick a mix card. There are, just give me. I got dirty fingers now. Yeah, the pick a mix card 
the, the white ten, tends to be really good for, for quite a lot of different projects. It's quite a versatile card. You can't put too much water on it, but um, but you can use it for quite a lot. There we are. So I've taken the mask away, and you can see that it just leaves a really nice crisp white um, sun or moon, whatever you want to. It could be more like a moon actually there, wouldn't it? Probably. Um, obviously, if you wanted to to um, make it a bit more subtle, you could put some more of the um, ink over that, but. I quite like it like that with a nice strong finish um, and I'm going to add a little bit of glitter to it as well uh, so let me just quickly give this a, a quick clean just to make sure that I don't get my arms in it obviously you could reuse this ink as well you know a lot of people if you've got a scrap of paper aside you can do what I did with the airless misters but with these inks as well they are very juicy ink pads and they're going to last absolutely ages. Three different ages. There you are. Uh, so... Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, and because I've embossed it, because I've heat embossed it, um, the, the stamped image, it doesn't, it tends to sort of resist a little bit on the, um, with the, with the inks. But I'm just going to carefully go over just in case there is any ink just sat on the the surface of the stamped areas just with a piece of toilet paper just carefully go over that just to pick up any any excess ink that's just sitting there just helps to sharpen the image a bit more Thank you, Donna. It is a good card, isn't it? Yeah, we do like it. There we are. And it's a good price as well. Can't go wrong if it's a good price. Right, so let me just find my guillotine. And then I'm just going to give it a quick cut down. So obviously you can cut it down to just inside those areas there you can cut it along the bottom and then if you want you can cut it along the top as well so just pop that in there and give it a quick a quick trim quick short back and sides make sure it's not wonky lined up with it yep and then now I've got my card blank here shall I give it a bit more of a yeah I'll take a little bit off the top as well I think now if it was Ian Ian would probably measure everything and you know and do all of that but I don't measure anything I do everything by eye. Mm, yeah, that'll do. <clears throat> so I will also, while I'm while I've got my guillotine out, I've got a piece of black card here as well. So what I tend to do normally with with card, I tend to just use my thumbnail and just make a little mark where I want it to cut. But obviously on black card, you can't see it so well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, just use a pencil just to mark where I want to cut. And again, by eye. I'm a by eye type of guy. A nice black mat. Can't beat a bit of black. There we are, so it just makes it pop a 
especially because it's black. Ooh, why is that a wonky? Especially because it's black, stamped in black as well. Why have I, what have I cut wrong? I cut something wrong there. It might be my. Yeah, I cut that all wobbly. There we are. That's better. Huh? Bonjour Nelly. Uh, Sarah said, "Is that the small cut? Small cutter? Uh, no, this the the guillotine that I've got is a is an um, an old X cut trimmer. Um, but you could use. We do have a um, oh, what have we got? We got a Crafts Two small trimmer in the shop uh, that would be fine for this sort of." trimming um, and um, I think we're out of the larger ones at the moment we do we usually sell the large um, crafters companion guillotine but I think we're out of those at the moment I think we sold the last one um, last week I think it was um, but we will be having some more in again so um, I do recommend um, guillotines I'd prefer them to um, to paper trimmers I just but then that's the thing it's you know it's personal preference I prefer a guillotine, but some people prefer trimmers, so it's entirely up to you. Uh, does the small one have the score lines? No, I don't think it does. I think it's just, well, I mean, this this one doesn't have score lines anyway. It just has, um, these are just the measurements on the trimmer. I think the, the Crafter's Companion one does have the score the actual scoring tool and you can score on it uh, but the crafts to one that we've got doesn't but the reason we've got the crafts to one in the smaller one is because it works out better value for money compared to the crafters companion one I think so that's why we've um, we've got that because we always like to get the best value for our customers if we can Hi Helen, thanks for joining us. Yep, it certainly does, doesn't Donna, doesn't it? it? Certainly makes it pop. So now I'm going to quickly use uh, this is the two-in-one glue pen, but you could use um, the quickie glue pen as well, or if you've got a fine nozzle um, glue bottle with PVA glue in it, you could use that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around the edge of my moon. I'm going to call it a moon. Um, and just make a very thin line, just a rough line on the edge of my moon. And then I'm going to put some glitter on there. And it just helps to define the edge of the moon a little bit. And who doesn't like a little bit of bling? And this one, it does go on blue when you first apply it. And then as it goes, when it, once it's clear, then it's um, tacky. And that's that. And then I'm just going to use a an iris iridescent or clear glitter, white glitter, you know, you could use anything like that really. Or you could use a coloured glitter if you'd like. The choice is yours. And just sprinkle that. On the edge there. Ooh, and it's actually because it's... Oh, the only thing is it's picked up my my repositionable glue bit. Oh, there we are. Just thought I can wipe it off. Just 
grabbed hold of it a little bit there. there we are. I think it's picked up a little bit the um, the the pigment ink pad. It might have stuck a little bit to that as well because it was probably still a, a just a smidge wet. But I actually quite like that because it gives it a nice sort of a nice glow, a nice sparkly glow. Oh, so that's me glitter. How long have I been on? An hour? An hour? There we are. So that's a little pretty. I don't know if you can see the glitter or not on there. Sparkling. You can see it a little bit, I think. Uh, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to carefully stick onto my black mat with my favourite glue, the High Tackle Purpose. Love this glue. Try not to get my fingers in my glitter. Getting a bit low on this one, so I've got another bottle just in case. But this never clogs, never clogs. As long as you make sure you put your uh, bung, your silicon bung back onto the top of it, then, um, then you'll be fine. It won't clog. So pop that on there. Few seconds to grab. Oops. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to stick that to my card blank. So this was uh, just a 210 by 210 card blank. Again, it's from our Pick a Mix card. And I've just scored it at 105 millimeters and fold it in half, and that's my card blank. So easy peasy. So, a bit more glue on there. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Make sure it's the right way up. Nice warm colours on this as well, aren't they? Now, actually, what I'm going to do. I cut this a little bit shorter it's overhanging I could have just left it in the center but because I've cut it a little bit shorter and, and I like to have just a nice neat border around it I should just give it a quick trim Doo -doo -doo. So just give this a quick trim. And the edge there. Hope for the best. There we are, so that's that. Nicely stuck down. And then the last thing I want to do is do my sentiment so i'll grab my <coughs> sentimentally yours sentiments and then ooh, which one shall i use um, um what about make a wish that would be nice wouldn't it yeah i think i'll go make a wish thank you annette It would indeed, Annie. It would make a nice engagement card. Now, where have I put my... Oh, there it is. I keep losing everything now. Right, so I've got my little piece of card here. Oops. 
hate it when my magnets stick together. Oh. Ah. So I'm going to heat emboss this. So again, I'll get my embossing powder ready. Pick it up. And again, this is the VersaFine ink pad. That's the good thing about having a clear in a clear um embossing powder is that you can stamp with whatever color ink you like you know I could have slapped stamped with one of the pigment inks and then just use the clear embossing powder over the top and um, and it would take on whatever color ink you've actually stamped oh, now is that mood I to mood a little bit I'll leave it like that I think just to be safe Probably should have used a bigger piece of card, really. But there we are. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yes, I know, Ian. I should have put it in the corner. I like to live dangerously, though. So I will give this a quick blot with my scrap. What have you got, Donna? The stamps? Is it that you've got? You've got some of these stamps? Which ones have you got? And then use my cleaner. wipe see just cleans so well that does Look at that. you can hardly even see the stamp now because it's so clean make a wish really good stamp set to have this one is it's um very versatile and it seems to the, the font seems to just work with quite a lot of different types of stamp and different styles of card you, you can use it with traditional styles and more modern styles and all sorts of things so just give it a quick blast It starts melting in a different place to where I think it's going to start melting. For some reason. I'll turn it round so I don't burn my fingers. There we are. That'll do nicely. And then make sure it's cooled. Ah, right, though, the sentimentally stamps. Sentimentally your stamps. Yeah, they are fab, aren't they, Donna? So useful. Yeah, we've got a wonky heat gun for some reason. Easy enough to do. Yeah, so that's my sentiment. And then I've just got a little bit of foam tape. And then I'm just going to pop that on the back. And Phil's actually designed these so that the foam tape 
the width of the foam tape is just right for these so um so it you don't have to worry about it overlapping or anything on there So it's starting to get a little bit darker now as well, isn't it? Now, this is the... Now, do I stick it in the top? Yes, I'm going to have to put it in the top, aren't I, somewhere? I mean, I could put it over the, over the side or something. It's, this is this is the most difficult bit, is deciding where to put my sentiment. But no, I think it's going to have to go in the, in the moon, in the focal part. That's where it's going to have to go. straight very true Donna they do they do they do they do there we are so that's my make a wish oh isn't that lovely yeah so I've heat embossed it and heat embossed this as well so um so you can see it comes out a bit clearer than um when you just stamp like on this one I stamped uh, first of all, yeah, I, did I stamp first of all? Yes, I stamped first of all. And then I put the ink on afterwards, and obviously you can see the ink does sort of tend to sit over the top of some of the... Um, that's quite a nice effect, though. It looks quite nice. So, um, then, then that's fine. But if you want something a little bit stronger, then um, I'd advise heat embossing. For that, there we are. So um, let me just grab my picks, my um, Airless Mister one that I did earlier, and this is more or less dry. Yes, it's dry. Oh, actually, no, it's still a little bit wet. There's a little blob there that's a little bit wet. So um, yeah, so that was the one I did then. Uh, so I will probably do a card. I'll do it that way, even, but no. Yeah, I'll do a card on that and I'll I'll post that on our Facebook page and and have that in the shop to show everyone when I've finished doing that as well. So that'll give me something to do. Um and there we are. So I've got those are the three cards, the four cards that I've done. Is that in shot? I think that's in shot, isn't it? That'll do. Oh, it's not quite in shot, is it? I see. I'm gonna faff now and try and squeeze them all in at a nice jaunty angle. There we are. Yeah. So um. So there we are. That's it. That's my cards all done. <clears throat> so um, for all sorts of different occasions, lots of different stamps um, in the designer boutique stamp sets um, that we've got in, in the shop. Uh, they're all available on the website as well. So if anyone would like to order either for and we'll be back in, um, I'll be in the shop on Saturday. So if any orders need to go uh, in the post I'll be sorting that out on Saturday and um, if anyone wants to place any orders for store pickup then um, you can come into the shop on Saturday or come to the shop on Saturday and um, we'll drop them outside for you I can't fit these all on nicely can I just what it just doesn't want to work anyway um, so thank you for joining us um, thank you to everyone that's been um ordering for store pickup um and um for deliveries over the last couple of months um we're still in lockdown in wales um and i'm not sure how much longer it's going to be at least until the end of this month maybe into the middle of next month um oh hello olive how are you it's a nice name isn't it i like the name olive <clears throat> well, well we can we can always post it olive <laughs> we send everything out via courier um, we don't use Royal Mail because we've had a few problems with them in the past 
Um, so um, yeah, so we we tend to use trapped courier, um, and um, and our delivery is only two ninety nine for per order, um, or if it's over forty pounds, it's free delivery. So cheaper than Crate and Craft and cheaper than a Chanda. <coughs> Um, yeah, so there we are. So thank you very much. Um, don't forget to share, like and share um, the live if you can. Um, and Ian will be back on doing a live next Thursday at two o'clock. Um, I think he's going to be using Julie, some of the Julie Hickey stamps and the die set that we've um, that came out at the end of last year. Celebration 2020 collection, I think it was. Um, so as soon as we've got that sorted, we'll post it on Facebook. Um, and... Um, I can't think of anything else to say, but thank you for joining us. Take care, everyone. Be safe. Um, get your vaccines if you haven't already. Um, I'm just what ours is going to be between July and September, apparently. So we've got a while to wait yet. Um, and um, we shall see you all soon, hopefully. Take care then.